Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing a circular portrait logo effect. Now, at the end of the video, I'll show you, you can cut this off and have it with a clear background and also have it in a square format if you want to use it as your image on Google Plus and YouTube, things like that. But it's pretty straightforward, as you can see here. It's an interesting video. We'll be starting with a image just like that, just a photograph, and then turn that photograph into our logo effect. Alright, let's go ahead and see how this whole thing is done. Let me just close that down. And just save that. There we go. Get that out of the way. Okay, we'll be starting off with this picture here, and I'll be doing a new file for this. Let's go up to File, New, and I'll do a blank file in here. I'll have this set at the default Photoshop elements size, which is 6 by 4 inches, and it's 300 resolution. If you're not using inches, just switch over to pixels. It's 18 by 1200. Okay, so here's our new file. Let's get this part out of the way very quickly. I'll just go over to this image and then drag this like that. Just kind of stick that right there for the moment. And we'll hide that layer. Now the link for this image is on the support page for this video. So just click on the link in the description and you can then get the download for this image. Okay, first thing we want to do is to find the center point of our file here. It's easy to do. First check view and snap to and make sure that document bounds is selected. It should be. That's the default setting. And then grab the roller left hand side, drag this in. It will kind of snap when it gets to the center point. There it is. And it will snap when it gets the center point on the horizontal as well. And there it goes. There's our center. I'll set the background colors here to our defaults and then invert those. So have a white. We'll be making a circle now in here. So go to the shape image, choose the ellipse tool. Let me just dock this. There we go. Ellipse tool set up for a circle and set it for from center. Now position the crosshair here right on the center and then drag out until it just about fills the image. It doesn't need to go all the way, but you know, up here somewhere. Kind of like that. Just a nice size on this thing. And here's our, our first step. So we have our nice basic logo shape here. Let's now bring back up our image. I'll move the image above our circle. There we are. And this set the image to about 50% or so. Just kind of make it so it's transparent so you can see that white area and the circling behind that. And I'm going to float this again, just make this as large as we can so I have some working space. There we go. Now grab a corner and let's start to stretch this image out until it fits in as we want it. And it's a pretty big enlargement. I think about there looks pretty good. This is just a, a visual choice in here, exactly how much you want. If you want to have more hair or a little bit of the shoulder showing or the neck, whatever it is, it's up to you. One thing I'm making sure is that I am catching the top of the head up here, the top of the picture, so the top of the picture is just inside the circle. And I think that looks pretty good. Hit the green check mark and there we go. All right, let's set this back to 100% opacity. Now we're going to be putting this image inside of that circle, but before I do that, I want to improve this image a little bit. We no longer need those guides, by the way, just uncheck guides so you don't see those. Let's improve the values here, just a little bit of levels work on this. Now, normally on levels work, I would do this as a 
an adjustment layer in here with levels. But this time I'm not going to be doing it this way because I want to be able to then convert that layer over with a threshold effect. If you want to preserve this layer just to safety, just drag it up here and then hide your original. So there's our safety. Let's now work directly on this one with our levels. So let's enhance, adjust lighting and levels. And all I want to do is to increase the contrast and that's on the input levels, the black and the white values. Pull those in. Pull the black in and your black values become darker. Pull the white in and your white values become brighter. I just want to make it a bit more contrasty in here. I prefer using this control to the contrast brightness control because I have more control over it here. There we go. Just giving a bit more punch. That'll make the threshold filter more effective. Okay, I'm just going to mark this one level so we know what we did at that point. Okay, now I want to make a selection around the hair so we can separate the head from the background. So grab any of your selection tools. I like using the polygonal lasso tool up here. And then just come in and make a selection following the outline of the hair. Now the, the hair isn't really critical in this, so you don't have to be perfect on this selection. You don't need to use any of your fancy selection tools or anything else because we are going for that very very graphic look we have a lot of leeway in here I know it's up here someplace this is not going to matter this, this will be in behind the circle anyway up there that's what the basic shape of the hair and some of the curls and things and I'll take it down around the bottom like that and complete that. There we go. We can now use this to make a layer mask just like that and that then clips off that excess background that we no longer need. Okay, we'll be coming back and using this in just a second. Let's go first though and do our threshold on this image. So take this layer and duplicate it again. Let's just hide that one. Notice how it pulls that layer mask with it. This is our threshold. There we go. That's the black and white version. Now you'll find this under filter and adjustments and it's right down here. And what this does is it converts the image to straight black or white. And the reason why we increased our contrast here was to get a better rendition here. Now it's, it's real rough as you can see. It has a real graphic kind of look to it which I like for this kind of an image. And then on the threshold you can move this back and forth and control exactly how much of this is being transferred. So here's where you come in and make a quality adjustment. If you want it lighter, you know, go to the left a little bit. If you want it darker, go to the right. It's up to you how much you want. I'm going to come in here so I, so I see as much of the shape of the face as possible and still have the hair in there. Notice it's the, the face is about full right there. But to pull in some hair, I'll have to go a little bit further in. And that's just about where the edge of the hair is showing. And I'll leave it at that point. And choose OK. All right, so we have our black and white version. That's good. We now need to clip this even further so it clips inside of that circle. So holding on the Control key, come down here and click on the icon for this layer. That selects the contents of the layer. There we are. Now go over here, double click on the layer mask on the threshold layer, and it's selected inside. I want to have the outside selected, so go up to Select and Inverse. Now the outside is selected. Notice up here that black hides and white shows. So make sure you're on black when we are. Go to the paintbrush, and then just paint out here. And let's just get rid of that little bit of outside section on that mask. So what we end up with is the mask with the shape of the girl's head and then rounded where it goes outside of that circle. We now can deselect that shape. So there we go. We're all set now to begin working with our colors and then to put in our outer band and a few things like that.
we'll be adding color to a circle above the image and then using blending modes to blend that into our image. So come down to our shape one right here, drag up to the new layer button. There we go, here's our new layer. Now take this layer and drag it to the top of your stack. There we go. Double click on the FX on the right hand side and uncheck stroke and choose OK, it gets rid of the stroke. We need to simplify this layer, so right click and choose simplify and all that should clean out just a straight graphic. Let's double check, make sure it's just white without anything on there. I'm going to hide this circle and hide the background. And there we go, just a nice clean white circle. That's perfect. Bring it all back in again. Okay, we now need to put in a gradient in here. And I want the gradient just inside the circle, so hold the control key down and click on the icon. That selects just the circle. Now go over here to the gradients and in the gradient set, these are the default gradients as you can see right there, default, there it is. And choose this one, that's the violet to orange gradient and choose OK. Now if I bring back up the guides, notice how these divide this circle into four pieces. Click in the middle of the upper left hand corner here and then drag down right through the middle to the bottom right hand side. Now I want to have orange in here and not purple, so let's just reverse this. There we go, let's try that again. And there we go. And I can now hide those guides. There we are, and we can deselect as well. So this gives us kind of a sphere effect in here. Orange up here and then kind of purplish down there. We now need to blend this into our image in behind. That's easy to do. Just go up here and we're going to be blending using the linear dodge which is right there. So it's linear dodge add. And that just adds that color into the black areas of the image in behind. So we've now added this in. Okay that takes care of the coloration of the face. We now want to bring in a border around the outside. So I'll come down here let's grab our shape again drag it up just like that makes a new shape, drag this one up to here. So it's above our image. Now let's put our border in. So double click on the FX again and set the stroke to inside and then bring the stroke size up. You'll see a little bit of coloration in there. That's from that shape right here is colorizing this. We'll be adding an additional effect on that in just a second. So put this at around 21 or so, somewhere in there. And just get a nice kind of thin border and choose OK. Now I want to be able to get rid of the white center. Notice how the white center is blocking our girl in here. So to do that, we need to right click right where the name is. Right click, simplify layer. Notice that the FX is now gone. It's so not this outer border is part of the actual image. So I have an interior white part and then a black out part and that's being colorized by this. Now we can use the magic wand, click in the white area and it should select just the white part. Notice there's the selection and hit the delete key and that goes away. Okay, let's deselect. Now back over to my move tool click on this icon again, hold the control key down, click on the icon, and that selects just that border this time. Notice how it's got these two selections going on, it's just that border. We're now going to be adding in a color inside there, an additional color inside that border. We'll do that with a gradient again. Click on the gradients and then go over here to this chrome thing right there. And then Go to the upper right hand side and drag down to the bottom left hand side, just like that. And that color is in just inside of that selected area, which is inside of that band. And then deselect. So there's a nice little border. Let's add one effect onto this, a little drop shadow, kind of bring the edges up a bit. So we'll do a layer, layer style, style settings, and drop shadow. I'm leaving it just at the default settings in here, 5.5 five and 75, that's fine, choose OK. It just kind of firms up the edge of that. OK, last thing to do now, come down to the background and we'll put a gradient on this background. So I have a couple of colors in here. 
the first one. I'm just going to copy it from my notes and then paste it in down here. Then I'll see what this is. So paste. So we have is a very light yellow, kind of in the yellow orange range here. And it's on the light hands part of that, just a real light kind of a soft orangey yellow. That's FDF3BC. And I'll put these values up on the support page for the video as well. So you can just copy those if you want to. So there it is. That's our foreground color. Change the background color. Same thing. I'll just copy it from my notes, which I'm doing off screen there, so you can't see that. And paste. Same color range, just a bit darker in here. This is D. 2C697. And again, that number is on the support page for the video. Now back to our gradients. Change the gradient in here to the foreground. Now this is my click on the little down arrow. Before I was clicking over here, same thing. You just click on the first option, which is foreground to background. Now set the gradient here to radial and you want to go light to dark so make sure the left side here is light and the right side is dark if you're seeing it like that because the reverse was still on from our last gradient just uncheck that so left side light right side dark click right in the middle of the circle someplace and then drag down to the bottom right hand corner and that gives us that nice background gradient and there's one last little step to do, and that's getting rid of this circle right here. Just hide that. That goes away, and we now get this coloration in the background here. If I bring that back in again, it's all white in behind. Let go, and it gives us that nice little coloration. Okay, so there's the basic logo. Now, the two last steps you might want to do, depending upon what you are interested in. Let's say you wanted to use this image with a clearer background. You don't want to have this background. I can't just hide the background because that changes what's in here. So what I need to do, and I'll just in a couple of steps, I'll take the background layer make a copy of that. Can now hide that background. Go up here to our basic shape, hold the control key down, click on the icon. That selects that shape, just like that. Now we're going to invert that selection, select and inverse right there. Run the copy of the background, hit the delete key, and then just delete that out. So just deselect. So what they did was that left us that gradient, but just in behind the image, just like that. So that allows you to use this image with a clear background if that's what you need to do. Other thing which you might want to do, let's say you wanted to have this in a square, which you can then use on Google Plus and then use that over on your YouTube channel. So you need to square this out. Now this is 400 by 600, so it's 400 tall. It's 600 wide, actually you know, it's four by six. So I need to cut off an inch here and an inch here. So I'll just grab the left hand guide and pull it over here to the one, like that and then do a right hand guide at the five. There we go. We now can use our crop tool right down, right down here and grab right at the top up there. So you just pull this in and just put it right over to that top. Right there, there's our point. Same thing on the right hand side and that crops that into a perfect square. Choose OK and that's what you need to use over on Google and on YouTube. You want to have this as your icon over there. And if you came in tighter on this, of course, it would be a bigger circle for that. I like leaving a little bit of space in there just so you see the whole thing, the whole effect. And so there we go. That is how you can do a circular portrait logo. Let's just hide those guides. And there we go, a circular portrait logo. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos 
in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 